Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the YouTube video. So today actually marks the official end of my internship working at Microsoft. I figured it would be a great idea to make a video, kind of talk about my experience, everything that I've worked on. I'm going to demo some of the projects. I'm going to talk about kind of a day in my life and then finally share some key takeaways and then kind of some tips and advice for anyone looking to get into software engineering uh, and just some things that I've learned that I think I can share with you guys. So before I get into all of that, let me just give you some quick context. I was actually offered a position in Redmond, Washington. So for anyone that doesn't know I currently live in kind of the Toronto area which is in Canada which means the US obviously is cross borders and due to COVID-19 I was unable to go to Redmond Washington which is Microsoft's home base so the internship was turned into remote and that means I actually worked here from Toronto uh, with a US team that was mostly located in Seattle area which is right beside Redmond Washington I was actually working on the Python extension for Visual Studio Code so we had a team probably about 30 people that are responsible for the Python extension Within that team, there's kind of three sub teams. I was on the data science team, so working specifically on data science related features, uh, mostly related to kind of Jupyter notebooks and stuff like that. But anyways, that is enough context for this. The last thing I will say is that all of this stuff is open source. I'll actually link the GitHub repository down below if you care to kind of see exactly what I worked on in terms of the code. Uh, and yeah, with that, let's go ahead and get started and talk about my 12 weeks at Microsoft. So as I mentioned, I was working primarily on data science related features within the Python extension. That meant I had to learn about data science myself and I actually got to sit in on interviews with real data scientists that were showing us their workflow and kind of what features they liked in VS Code. Now, speaking of data science, if you want to get started with that, you should check out the sponsor of today's video. I need to thank Simply Learn for sponsoring this video and giving you all a discount on their data scientist master program that was co-developed with IBM. This program is comprised of six unique courses that implement a unique blended learning experience in a high engagement online classroom environment. During this program, you will master 30 plus in-demand skills and work with tools and languages like R, SAS, Python, Tableau, Hadoop, and Spark. You'll master these skills through 15 real life projects and one capstone project during this 12 month comprehensive course. You'll also be given 1200 USD worth of IBM Cloud credits to use during your 24-7 access to the IBM Watson platform. After completion of this course, you'll be given certificates from IBM and Simply Learn to testify to your skills as an expert in data science. Use the code YT10 at the link in the description. So now I'll get into kind of the demo part of the video and talk about what I actually worked on at Microsoft. So the first thing I worked on was resizing a variable explorer pane. So within Jupyter Notebooks, you can click on this little thing. It looks like a little grid. Essentially, that is a variable explorer. What it does is it allows you to view the values of your current active variables within the notebook. So previously, before I worked there, this was just a static pane. So it just took up like 300 pixels on the screen. That was the height. You could either toggle it on or off. You could not resize it. So obviously it was really annoying. And within VS Code, you can resize like literally everything. So why can't you resize that? So that was my first thing uh, working on that. That took me probably about three or four days to kind of get fully functioning. And that was really just to get me comfortable with the code base, understanding the processes, the workflow, how GitHub operates, kind of all of that stuff. And then after I did that, they asked for some other enhancements related to the variable explorer. So for example, hey, can we get some telemetry? Like, you know, let us know if someone toggles the variable explorer or if they resize it. Um, let's store that information so that we know that. Oh, and another great feature, let's make it so that when they resize it, when they reopen that notebook another time or they retoggle that variable explorer, it goes back to the same size that they had it at before. So essentially just keeping track of what they resized it to. And then when they open that again, uh, it will be at that same size. And that's going to be specific to notebooks. So if you have, you know, untitled notebook one or like test notebook two, and you resize their explorers to different heights, then they will both remember that. So if you open one of those specific notebooks, it will go to that notebook's uh, preferred height. So that was what I worked on. That took me about two and a half weeks to do all of that stuff. Some other small cosmetic changes to the variable explorer. And that was really kind of my introduction, getting started, you know, let's get some success under your belt and then you can work on some more difficult things. So the next feature I worked on was exporting notebooks um, to uh, different formats. So Jupyter Notebooks uh, .ipymb files, we want to be able to export those to Python scripts, uh, HTML documents and PDF documents. 
So this involved writing new code completely from scratch. I was probably, you know, a few thousand lines of code, but I had to be really careful when I was writing this because I needed to make sure that we could support other formats in the future. So this writing this whole feature took me about eight weeks and it was really a heavily focused on kind of the design of what I was doing. Okay, how are all these classes interacting? Uh, how can I make sure this is super flexible and that we can change stuff really easily? Okay, how can I test this feature to make sure that if someone makes a new pull request, they're not gonna break my own feature. So that's what I worked on for about eight weeks is doing that export. You guys would be seeing that on the screen so you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. So after I finished the export related feature, I had about two weeks left in my internship, so not enough time to do anything crazy. So I started researching and looking at how we could actually improve the data viewing experience uh, within the Python extension. So currently within the variable explorer, if you have a data frame there, you can actually view it in our data frame viewer. It's fine, but it's nothing crazy. It's not like the best data frame viewer out there. And it's kind of slow when you have like millions of rows in there. So they asked me pretty much, hey, Tim, you know, can you do some research related to this and see if there's any frameworks we could use or just better approaches to doing this than our current data viewer? Unfortunately, after looking around, there wasn't anything that was going to be easy to integrate that was actually better than what we currently had. So I kind of scrapped the idea of, you know, making the current data frame better and said, hey, you know, our viewer is OK for now. Obviously, it could use improvements, but we'd have to rewrite the whole thing. I don't have enough time to do that. So let me see what else I could work on. So it turns out there's this 3D data visualization tool called Sandance. It's like a state of the art visualization tool made by another Microsoft team. So I reached out to that team and said, hey, you know, I'd love to integrate this with the Python extension. Maybe we can view our data frames in Sandance. You guys already have an extension for VS Code. This should be super simple. We'll just have to set a few things up. Uh, so that's what I worked on during the last week. So unfortunately, I didn't have enough time to actually finish this feature completely, but I wrote some prototype code that was kind of a proof of concept that showed our team that, hey, yes, we can do this. And this is kind of like a basic working implementation of it. So essentially, when you have a data frame, rather than just being able to view it in kind of the 2D grid system we had, uh, now, based on the code that I wrote, you can view it in Sandance, which is this 3D visualization tool with all these graphs and charts and stuff. Uh, and that was kind of my last week was just working on that prototype code and trying to kind of have a proof of concept and leave my team with something that they could implement once I was gone. So that's kind of all I worked on during the summer. It might not seem like a lot, but there was a lot of code and there was also a lot of stuff I did that wasn't just coding. For example, like finding bugs, you know, team meetings, um, stand-ups, whatever, like a ton of other stuff that takes up a lot of time in the day. So I wanna give you a quick run through of a day in my life uh, when I was actually working at Microsoft. Now, unlike many other people that make these kind of videos or you know, the day in the life of a software engineer, I don't have those cinematic clips of me going to the cafeteria or me getting in my fancy car or going down the water slide or wearing my you know free t-shirt, whatever it may be that they're showing you. I'm gonna to talk to you about what my actual work day looked like and what I was actually doing when I was working, not just filming myself working, which is what some of these videos were doing, which was funny to me when I watched some of them. Regardless, um, my day usually started around 11 a.m. So Microsoft is super flexible with schedule and time. My manager pretty much told me, hey, you can work whenever you want, just kind of be online for most of the meetings and the core hours of the day. And if I need to get uh, like in touch with you, just answer me. Like that was literally all I was kind of given. There was no one really looking over my shoulder like, what are you doing today? Like what's going on? Like what are you working on? Like there was a lot of trust uh, and I really appreciate that for sure because I don't like to be micromanaged. And I like to kind of manage my own time uh, and they definitely gave me full kind of autonomy to do what I wanted just trusted I was going to get my work done so the reason I started working at 11 a.m was because my team is located in Seattle that's Pacific Standard Time I'm in Eastern Standard Time so doing the conversion they're about three hours behind me so their my 11 a.m was their 8 a.m so I would usually go from around 11 a.m to 6 or 7 p.m at night my time uh, and then after that, I would sign off and you know do whatever else. But this actually worked out really well for me because this meant I had about three hours in the morning between the time I got up, which was around 8 a.m. And when I started working to kind of film YouTube videos and work on my own stuff, because as many of you know, I'm pretty busy. I have a lot of other things uh, that I'd be doing during the day. 
Now, during the core of my day, uh, it really differed depending on what I had that day. Some days I had six hours of meetings, just like back to back to back. Other days I had, you know, one hour of meetings or a 20 minute meeting in the middle of the day. Uh, but I'd say on average, I probably had about two hours of meetings every day. And that was just between, you know, other engineers, or that might've been a stand up where we're kind of summarizing what we've done over the past few days and just relaying everything with the team. Uh, that might've been a demo meeting. I might've been sitting in on um, like an AMA or something something or whatever's going on. But I just had probably about two hours of meetings every single day. And even when I didn't have formal meetings scheduled, I was always, you know, calling other engineers or screen sharing with someone, or we were going through a problem and solving it together. A ton of communication. And I would say about 50% of my time at Microsoft was spent communicating with other people, whether that be in a Teams channel or over email or over an actual phone call or in a meeting environment. So just something to keep in mind that communication is super important. And I would not have been able to get through this experience if I wasn't good at communicating and able to explain um, you know, all the problems I was having, all the stuff that I was doing, the solutions I was gonna do. Uh, and not to mention, before I actually was able to even write any code, I always had to do a ton of research and look into, you know, is this solution that I'm going for get, make sense? Is this the best way to do it? Is this gonna be fast enough? Is there a better alternative? So there was a lot of stuff that wasn't actually coding. Now, of course, you guys are here for the coding aspect. Once all of that stuff was done, then I actually had time to code. And that was when I'm kind of sitting alone, you know, listening to my music and just dialed in and just programming, writing code. And there's not really much more to describe with that. It was just me, you know, interacting with GitHub. So I'll look at, you know, my pull requests, say, oh, okay, they want a revision there. I need to change that. So the basic workflow for anyone that doesn't know kind of how open source development works is, I would um, you know, write code on my own local machine, test it, write automated tests for it, and then push it up to GitHub where other members of my team would review my code. They'd review the code, they'd look through the pull request is what it's called, and then they give comments on it. So they'd say, hey, you know, I think this is okay, but maybe you can try doing that method. Or they'd ask a question like, I don't quite understand what you did here. Could you explain that? Or like, why did you decide to use this pattern rather than that pattern? So it was really, um, you know, every piece of code I was putting up, other people were looking at, and that was gonna be checked into the master branch of the code base, which hundreds of different people are working on, right? So you need to make sure that that code is clean, that it passes all the tests, that nothing breaks. And there's a ton of processes that happen automatically, like CI, which I think is continuous integration. So all the testing um, will run against your code when you submit it to make sure you don't break anything when you push that code up. But that was kind of what a day in my life looked like. I mean, I had a few presentations that I did just demoing kind of stuff that I had worked on. Uh, and that was really about it. I mean, it's hard to kind of walk you through a real day in the life when I'm just explaining to you what I did, but a lot of meetings, a lot of communication. And I just really want to emphasize that because I think a lot of people assume you're going to be coding most of the time. At least in my experience, that definitely wasn't true. But teamwork was just so important and critical um, with everything we were doing. And it really made me you know, want to even talk about it in this video that my team really wasn't just, you know, 10 individual programmers or five individual programmers or whatever it was. It was a team of programmers. You know, each individual person had their role and worked on their stuff, but there wasn't one person who only did that or only did this. There wasn't, you know, these separate things that each person did. Everyone was working on the same thing together. And that's why teamwork was so important because, you know, the other guy on the team needs to know how to be able to read the code that I just wrote. Everyone needs to know what major changes are happening, who's dealing with what area of the code base, uh, and everyone's expected to kind of be familiar with any area. So if anything breaks or someone leaves or, you know, someone's sick for a week, someone else can jump into what they were working on and immediately start working on it. And that kind of leads me into like code quality and code health. That was a big takeaway for me as well. Writing high quality code was, was essential. As I mentioned, it had to be something that you know, I, I was submitting it to my other engineers. They were reading over it. They had to approve of that before it could get checked into the code base. It wasn't just my code. It was all of our code. They would give recommendations on things to change. Maybe I'd modify something they had before. And it really just was kind of a cool experience to see how software development was actually done kind of in the real world with a group of people. Because if you've never worked in a job like that, you've only ever really programmed by yourself or with a few other people, not in a huge team or with code that is even like legacy code that's been around for four or five years that maybe needs to be rewritten. So those were kind of my two key takeaways from this experience. And 
I just want to share those with you because I think before having this experience, that wasn't something that I really had a good perspective on was how people work together as a team in software development and how important it was that you were really thinking of the other person when you were writing your code. You're almost writing it because you want them to be able to jump in there and just understand everything that's gone on. So there's not really much more for me to talk about here. That's kind of been a summary of my intern experience here at Microsoft. So if you guys have any questions, please do leave them down below. I'm thinking about doing kind of like a Q&A related to my internship experience. So leave some down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. If you've been an intern, please kind of give me a little story or something. I love to read through those. And with that being said, I guess I will see you guys in another YouTube video.